Hi there. This is a recording of a recent student revision webinar where we took a look at uh, one important part of quantitative skills for A-level business, index numbers. And in fact, it was the first in a series of webinars where we take uh, a more detailed look at some of the important numerical skills that A-level business students need to get to grips with ahead of the exams. The kind of things the examiner will expect you to be able to understand and calculate and interpret. So let's take a look at index numbers. Uh, we started with indexes because they're very widely used in business. Here's an example on the chart and the screen there showing a well-known index you may have heard of, the FTSE 100. What this is is an index that shows the percentage change day by day of the value of the 100 most valuable companies on the London stock market. A similarly widely used index is this one. This chart shows the percentage changes in consumer prices, the so-called CPI or Consumer Price Index, that perhaps the most popular measure, most widely used measure of the percentage change in prices. So index numbers widely used and they could come up in the exams in different ways. We'll take a look at that in a few minutes. But firstly, let's just go through the calculations. And the most important part of this webinar is to remember that index numbers are there to help you calculate percentage changes. They show the percentage change in data, but most importantly, compared with the base. With index numbers, as Megan Trainer reminded us, she was a big fan of available business. It's all about the base. It's all about the base figure. Just to show you how this works, let's take a look at this simple example of how to calculate the actual index number. And I've taken as my base year 2014. In this case, the market size is valued at 500 million pounds. And there's my base, my index of 100. So for you in the exam, the index base will always be 100. Well, how does the index change as the market changes in value? We see that in 2015, 16 and forecast for 17, the market value changes, it increases in each year. So we would expect the index to increase to reflect the percentage change. So the calculation is quite straightforward. In 2015, it's 520 divided by the base times by 100. In 2016, it's all about the base, so it's 560 divided by 500 times by 100. And similarly for 2017, we take the 2017 number of 600 million and divide by the base. An index number is always calculated by reference to the base. So the calculation there, 600 divided by 500 times by 100. If you want to have a go at calculating those numbers to calculate the index, pause the video and get your calculator out or quickly scribble it down on a pencil uh, and paper. And we'll start in a couple of seconds to show you the answers. So let's have a look. Well, my index, if I did those calculations in 2015, it would be 104. In other words, a 4% change in the market size. In 2016, it's gone up to 112. And what that means is the market in 2016 is 12% higher than 2014. We always calculate by reference to the base. 2017 further growth 120 which means that the market in 2017 is forecast to be 20% higher than 2014. Of course you should be able to see from this that you might be able to work things out backwards. You might be given an index and asked to work out the market size or some other data based on the index. Now what's happening here is that with the index you're being given the percentage change and you simply have to use that to work backwards to work out what the value was. So let's have a look at this just for a minute or so. Uh, our base here is 2016. Uh, in this case, we've been given an index of 100 and we're told the market size is 250. How would we calculate what 2017 is? Well, we have to express the base figure, 250, uh, in relation to how the index has changed. So the calculation is the base, 250. And it's the change in the index. It's the percentage change in the index compared with the base. So 110 divided by the base of 100 times by 250. And similarly for 2018 and 2019, we express the base and work it out by reference to how much the index has changed compared with the base of 100. So again, if you want to pause the video and have a go at calculating what you think the market size is, you'll be able to see whether your numbers agree with mine. So again, pause the video if you want to have a go. And when you're ready, press start and we'll see if your numbers are the same. So those are the calculations. Let's have a look and see what the market value would be if the index numbers uh, moved up in those, uh, those, those ways. For 2017, 275. In other words, it's 10% higher than 
higher than 2016. For 2018, it's 312.5 million. And for 2019, well, we're told the index is 140. Divided by the base, that's a 40% increase on 216. So therefore, it's £350 million. So you can see that sometimes you might be given the index number and have to work backwards to calculate uh, the underlying data. So practice those calculations, practice under understanding how to calculate, calculate an index. Uh, now, of course, you might get given index numbers in different ways in the exam. You might be given a multiple choice question where you may be asked to calculate the market size or the market growth. You might just be given a chart with some index numbers, maybe or something around uh, business costs or consumer price inflation. And of course, it might make reference to an index on things like the HDI, the Human Development Index. So it could come up in lots of different ways. So you need to be comfortable both with the calculations, but also with how index numbers are used. Let's just have a quick uh, little exercise just to practice to see whether you can interpret some index numbers. Perhaps you might be given a, a table like this. Let's have a look. This is a table about a fitness club. Uh, it's my fitness club. And I've got four locations, Leeds, Bristol, Derby and York. And with the index, it's always worth thinking, what is the index calculating? In this case, it's an index of membership by location. So the numbers of members, how large is the membership of each club with 2014 being my base. So with 2014 being the base, 100, so the membership in Leeds, the membership in Bristol, Derby and York, whatever that membership was, that's our base. How does the membership of the clubs change in relation to the base? Now, we don't know what the numbers are in total, but we do know how the percentages, the percentage changes work. So, for example, let's look at Leeds. Well, in 2014, the base was 100 and um, by 2017, it's forecast to be 106, 6% 6 higher than 2014. Let's take another one. Is there a club that is uh, forecast to be lower than the base in 2014? Can you spot one? Well, looking at the table, you may spot that there are two clubs whose membership in 2017 is budgeted to be lower than the base in 2014. How can you tell? We're looking for an index that's lower than 100. If our index in 2014 was 100, Anything lower than 100 would suggest there has been a percentage fall in the value, it's not the value, the number of members. So two clubs there, Bristol, an index of 96, that suggests that's fallen. And similarly, York has also fallen from 100 as a base in 2014 down by 2% to 98% in 2017 of its 2014 level. So you can see how you might be able to use index numbers in a table to interpret some changes, some relative changes. Have a look too at uh, this chart that, uh, again, just illustrates sometimes how you might be given index numbers by way of a chart rather than the table. This one is for a curry house business and it's an index of the two key operating costs. The, uh, the red line with the red circle is an index of wage costs. And the, uh, the blue line with the cross marking the data points is an index of ingredients costs. You can imagine how those are two significant costs for a curry house. And we always look for the index base. So it looks like the base is 100. That's 2013 right in the middle of the chart. And you can see how you might be able to draw some conclusions from this chart just by seeing how the index numbers change over time. For example, I would say that uh, ingredients have clearly grown, the cost of ingredients have clearly grown faster than the cost of wages. The percentage change in the index is more significant from 2010 all the way up to 2016. So you might be able to draw some conclusions from index numbers presented as charts. Lastly, one little calculation for you. Let's see whether you've uh, been able to pick up how to calculate index numbers here. Here's a little table showing four years of data and we're told what the base is. So sales in 2013 were 200,000 pounds, we're told, and the base in 2013 was 100. So we're given some index number information for the following three years. Can you calculate sales in 2015 using the base? But also, what is the percentage change in sales between 2015 and 2016? So again, if you want to have a go at this, Pause the video, grab a calculator or a smartphone, pencil, paper, 
and have a go at calculating sales in 2015 and secondly the percentage change in sales between 2015 and 2016. And if you've had a go at doing that you'll have just started the video again if not we've just been running through let's have a look at the calculations. I just wanted to show you this one because it's not, not a trick question but you've just got to be careful about always calculating the right percentage change. Sales in 2015 is relatively easy isn't it? It's using the index numbers. So we know that the base was 100 in 2015. Um, the index had gone up to 120. So it's simply the index in 2015 over the base, 120 over 100 times by the number in 2013. So 120 over 100 times by 200,000. So the sales in 2015 must be 240,000. That's simply using the index numbers, the change in the index to calculate the percentage change. However, you just need to be a little bit careful there with that second calculation. This doesn't need you to use the base because it's asking for the percentage change between 2015 and 2016. So the key there is to simply express the two index numbers on top of each other as the percentage change. And we should know from percentage change calculations that's going to be the top number divided by the preceding number minus 1 times 100. So 130 in 2016 was the index, 120 was the index in 2015. So it's 130 over 120 minus 1 and times by 100 gives you the percentage change which is 8.3%. So that's just been a, an overview of the content that we uh, covered in the revision video on and, the, and webinar on index numbers.